Hey, and welcome to another episode of You Love Comic Books. This is episode 33 of a show that I do on YouTube where I showcase comic book calls, comic book speculations, uh, stuff from my weekly poll list. I'll do mini reviews. I'll even uh, show stuff from my uh, comic collection. Um, so, yeah, this is the 33rd episode of the You Love Comic Book saga. Um, so, yeah, if you found yourself uh, watching this video, it's probably because you like comic book calls, comic book speculations, comic book reviews, and uh, so why not become a subscriber to You Love Comic Books? Smash that subscribe button. If you like what you see, give it a like. If you have any questions on any of the stuff that you see in this video, leave a comment. Also, um, I have some links. If you are on Instagram, follow me on You Love Comic Books uh, under the same name as the show. I, uh, you'll see images of uh, comics from uh, this haul and uh, other stuff from my collection. Also, there's a link to my eBay. You can, uh, you'll be able to get, uh, you know, toys there and uh, other comic books and uh, trades and stuff like that. You know, so check it out. The links of those are in the captions of this episode. All right, you know what? Let's get into the haul. But before we do that, I'm just going to show you uh, stuff from my weekly pull list and just talk about it for a second. Star Wars Obi-Wan number two. So this is like a mini series focusing on Obi-Wan. Uh, he's, uh, I guess so far, he, it's the consistent with the first issue. It involves stories in his past and it's supposed to be him, ne well not now, you know. Well, whatever. Uh, before he probably meets Luke, you know, it's an older Obi Wan, and he's looking through his life. He's writing through his journal, and this issue kind of focuses on him and uh, Qui Gon. So this is a pre Episode One uh, story. It's okay. <laughs> I don't really have as much to say about it. It was fine. I, you know, it's funny. It's like Qui Gon. I always found him to be a boring character. He was only in one movie. Uh, spoilers for the Obi Wan show which was really good, actually. The last episode was amazing. So, um, all right, here we go. Darth Vader, 24. This is a pretty good storyline. It involves, uh, I always forget the name of this character. And I think this guy's name is Itchy. <laughs> I don't know what his name is. It, we'll just call him Itchy. And her name is Fake Padme. She was a handmaiden for... Uh, Padme, remember she had decoys and stuff, so Vader's probably all confused when he sees her, because she kind of looks like her, but he, it's basically the Keira Knightley character, I think, from episode one, um, so they're going to do some heist thing or whatever, I don't remember the story, it's pretty good, Darth Vader is always one of the better Star Wars comics, my god, I think I only read, currently reading Star Wars comics when it comes to current pull list, which, I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> Crimson Rain number five. This is the last issue of the Crimson Rain miniseries. Um, this was okay. So basically, like, Crimson Rain, uh, Kira, the character from the movie Solo, played by uh, the woman from Game of Thrones. <laughs> um, basically, uh, this is like a. This was like the middle part of the. Crimson Dawn trilogy, I guess, it's supposed to take place between Empire and Return. I would say this miniseries was really more like a series of one shots, focusing on different characters in the Crimson Dawn uh, group. Um, it's fine, you know. It was mostly set up for the next uh, storyline. Okay, here we go. the The real reason why we're here, the hall, the comic book hall. Here we go. All right, some dollar books. This is just, these are reprints, True Believers number one. It's basically a reprint of the first appearance of Purple Man. Um, it's interesting on these True Believers, they don't tell you the comic that it was. So I'm kind of, it's like Daredevil 7 or 6. I could be wrong. It might even be just Daredevil 4. Uh, I'm not going to be able to, I, you know, I started for a buck. I figured these True Believer books, do they have any like collectible value? Um, I think if these characters, like, show up in movies or anything, like, this, this character was in the Jessica Jones series, but if Purple Man or anything shows up, there will be interest in these. These do have, they do pertain a little bit of value. I kind of prefer these True Believers over the facsimile comics. I don't like those facsimile comics because 
one, there's a lot of scam artists out there trying to sell them as like actual collectible books. And two, uh, especially like the facsimile of the newer issues where the comics were three ninety nine like eight years ago also. Uh, I don't know. I like these true believers because it's like, it just feels like different. Uh, it's like they're selling you something else and they're just a dollar. So they're, they're fun to have. This is supposed to be based on the first parents of Bullseye. I think that's Daredevil 138. I could be wrong. I probably am wrong. Uh, you can look that up, but hey, not this was a uh, you know fun to get, and this is I know this is supposed to be a reprint of Iron Man fifty four, which is the first appearance of Moon Dragon. All right, here's a so those were a dollar each. Here's another dollar book, Phantom X number one, uh, the Max comic series. Eh, I figured I'd grab it, and then this one was a pretty good get for a book. Secret Wars Zero, the free comic book day. I might I don't know if I have this or not. But um, what's funny about this, though, and you can tell me in the comment section if it affects value or not. Um, I don't think it matters. I mean, like I said, I got it for a dollar. Uh, but it was printed on the back. Uh, not the store I got it from. Uh, wherever this collection, this store must have got it. It was from uh, somewhere in Fort Collins in Colorado. Uh do those uh do you feel like the free comic book day books lose their value when they print on them or is that kind of fun all right let's go to the media books batman 353 i've been wanting to get this one for a while basically this is just as you can see in it's in the corner it's a uh, let me adjust this camera here Extra free 16 page comic preview of the Masters of the Universe. So, this is like 16 pages of it. This comes from the DC Comics Presents story with Superman and He Man on the cover, uh, which is basically the first He Man comic book or Masters of the Universe comic. So, this book, I think I got this one for like 18. It's in really, really nice condition. Captain Marvel 25. Oh, sorry, I take that back. Captain Marvel. 17. This is the second appearance of Kamala Khan. She's on the last page of this book. Kamala Khan being in the new Miss Marvel. Um, this one was 25. Uh, I don't know. I, I looked through it. It was in really excellent condition. I was like, I'm just going to grab it. This one I've been wanting. I already have this one, but this is a better copy. Incredible Hulk Annual 5. This is the first... Uh, in Marvel Universe appearance of Groot. Groot appeared in, uh, like, like, Tales of Astonish, or Tales of Spence, like, pre, pre horror co like, pre-Fantastic Four. Uh, so this is the first in-continuity Groot. Um, I'm happy to get this. This is a much better copy, the one I got. I bought it at a collection last year. Um, and... So, and it was at a good price, so happy to have it. This is another one. Um, so this store I go to, he was basically letting me look at books that he had in the back that he hasn't put out. Of course, they didn't have prices, which is fine. I knew that going in. This guy's pretty reasonable, so I didn't mind doing that. And he had Batman Adventures number one, annual number one. So this is technically the third appearance of Harley Quinn. Uh, this is pre in continuity appearance, which is that like Harley Quinn comic with the famous Alec Ross cover. Um, the real expense, the one you want to get, but that's like a thousand dollar book, is uh, I think Batman Adventures number 12. It's got Batgirl on the cover with Harley Quinn and Poison Ivy. That's her first appearance. This is her third appearance. Happy to have it. Uh, it's in really, really nice condition. And anytime I could get these, uh, you know, if I could get an early Har like any of these Harley Quinn comic characters, I can't even speak. I'm recording this video right now. All the early appearances of Harley Quinn on the Batman Adventures comics command a pretty high price. All right, here's some eBay buys. Um, kind of, you know, I was like getting on an eBay kick and I was buying stuff, and then <laughs> then that got like a little disappointed in my last round. So now I'm kind of like, you know what? I think I'm just gonna go back to like going to the stores more and just buying books there and finding them. But this one, 
Iron Man War Machine 283. This is the, um, I guess technically the third appearance or second full appearance of War Machine. Uh, I don't think Rhodey, Rhodey's not in the costume yet. Uh, now the buyer, I, he did give me a discount on his, on the eBay. Like it was a buy it now with an offer, but he claimed it was a near mint. It is not a near mint. Like it has like a freaking like tear right here. And, uh, I don't know. And there's some spine ticks and stuff like that. It's definitely not a near mint book. Like I said, I got it for way less than what, like he was asking, but it's still kind of like, come on, a near mint book's not going to have a tear in it. Like. Who are you fooling here? Uh, this one finishes up my uh, run for Captain Marvel. Uh, not the run, but like it's a kind of like the Thanos saga storyline. It starts with Captain Marvel 25 and ends in Captain Marvel 34. And this is the one I was missing. It's in pretty good condition. I'd say it's like almost like a fine, like a, a, a press and a clean would definitely give do this book wonders. Uh, I've seen this book go for like way more than I want to spend on it. I wonder if it, well, one, uh, it's Ion's first appearance. It's like a character to do with Quasar. And I think it's just like an iconic cover of, you know, Captain Marvel just like jumping out. It's kind of a, it's one of the more iconic Captain Marvel covers. Uh, happy to have it. They wanted like 22 or something or 25. I don't remember, but I did, I asked 15, on the bite now, and they went along with it. So I was happy with that one. All right, more, more in the hall, more stuff in the hall. Spawn number one. This is a blank cover variant they just put out, uh, and uh, like it's a reprint. I'm obviously the book came out 30 years ago. It says 30 years, 1992 to 2022. Uh, I do. I'm an artist, and I draw on these, so I'll probably do something with this. So, here we go. Marvel Comics Presents, number 19. This one's in pretty decent condition. This is um, the first appearance of Damage Control. I guess technically, the first appearance is in Marvel Age, if you want to get real technical. But this is the first appearance of Damage Control. What I love about this cover is that... Uh, now, Damage Control has showed up in Spider-Man um, Homecoming and has shown up in recently in Miss Marvel. This is an old Rob Liefeld cover. Look at this. I think, honestly, he was a better artist back in the 80s than he is now. I think he his poses were better. I don't know. I look back at some of his old books. Like, uh, the What If Wolverine was in S.H.I.E.L.D. That's a really good Rob Liefeld book. And, like, his New Mutants run pre-X-Force. And I just feel like, I don't know, if his influences were, like, better. And, I don't know. <laughs> Let's save that for another episode. Alright, so that was at that, this was at a different store. And I went back there, like, two weeks later. And uh, I forgot to grab this one. Marvel Comics Presents, number 18. Now, the reason why I wanted to get this book is this is kind of like a minor key. This is the first. This predates She-Hulk's sensational She-Hulk series. So this is the first She-Hulk where she breaks the fourth wall. It's a, like, there's a story in here. And it's drawn by John Byrne. And uh, I feel like, with the, especially if the She-Hulk series comes out, when it comes out, and if it's a big hit, and she does break the fourth wall, this book is definitely going to pick up. Like, it, it's just going to. Like, look at that. Amazing. This is, like, such a great picture right here. This, like I said, this, this comes out, they even advertise in the end of the uh, story, you know, she and sensational she hulk coming soon like i guess if this came out and you know for christmas time oh my god i can't even get this book in what am i doing uh <laughs> that you know this came out like a month or two before okay here we go uh finishing up the hole got some other books for you action comics 457 <laughs> this is one of those covers where you go what were you thinking? 
Sir, ma'am, my dying wish is to know your secret identity, and you say you're Clark Kent. It's a lie. Um, I don't know what Superman's doing behind that kid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this is uh, definitely one of those. I got it for five. Uh, ended up getting for less than that because he gave me a deal on these books I'm going to show you. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I don't know what to say about this. I'm glad I only paid five for this one, or, you know, less than five. This is one of those, like, bizarre covers where, you know, they're like, what were you, what were you doing? You know, what, what are you thinking? Like, who drew this, you know? <laughs> I think it might be Kurt Swan, actually. But it's really funny. All right, here we go. One of the good ones, the man thing, number one. So my last episode, I showcased that I got uh, Adventures into Fear 19, which is the first Howard the Duck. This continues right side out. Yeah, this continues right after Adventures into Fear and man thing gets his own book. And so this is the second appearance of Howard the Duck. This book's in decent condition. Like, you know, it's got some spine ticks. The book could really use a press and cleaning on the cover. The inside of the book is pretty phenomenal. Pages are like almost white, you know, for a book from, you know, 20 cents era Marvel. And I don't know, this book has been picking up. He had it listed for 30, he had it for 30, uh, and he gave me 15% off of everything. And had, I've seen this book go for way more on eBay. And it's like in like kind of similar condition, like way more, like going for like 60, 70. So I'm happy to have this. I love this cover. It's like a really amazing cover. And again, second appearance of Howard the Duck. I think there's another first appearance in this book. I could be wrong. I've been wanting to get this one for quite some time now. Peter Parker's Spectacular Spider-Man number 90. This is the, uh, I guess, considered the second or third, depending on how you want to look at it, Black Suit Spider-Man. So, obviously, the first Black Suit Spider-Man is Amazing Spider-Man 252. This came out, like, a week or two later. Uh, I think it was released the same time as Marvel Team-Up 141. I could be wrong. I think that's the number. That has Spider-Man on the cover. This does not have Spider-Man on the cover. Well, I mean, it does. You know, he's there. But he's not in the black costume. He shows up on the second to last page. Or he shows up on the last page jumping out of a tree. Basically, Black Cat is, like, looking for... Peter Parker the entire, because Peter Parker was in, like, uh, off at uh, Secret Wars land. So you got to understand, when this book came out, no one, Secret Wars 8 didn't come out yet. Now I don't know what the release schedule in the comics were. I have to, like, go look that up. Like, at what point, what issue was Secret Wars at when this issue came out? Because, you know, you don't find out what how Peter Parker got the costume until issue 8 of Secret Wars. Happy to have this. I don't have Amazing Spider-Man 252. Um, he had this the, at the store, like I said, he gave me like 15 or 20% off, uh, everything. He had this at for 50. It's in really, really nice condition. It's a newsstand and, uh, I'm happy to have it now. Uh, like I said, I got the Marvel team up one, 141. I got that last year, 252. I don't know. I'm hoping to like look into like I hope to look into finding a decent copy of it at like an affordable price because I don't want to go out and spend like 200, 300, 400, whatever it is it takes to get that book. Uh, so who knows? Maybe I'll get lucky on that one, but happy to have this. And then this one's a really good get. Amazing Spider-Man 239. This is the second appearance of the Hobgoblin. Uh, I have the first one. I got it a long, long time ago. Uh, 238. That, I got that as like, I don't even know how old I was. I was like a teenager or something. I paid like three bucks for it. It wasn't in the greatest condition, but the best thing about that book, the one I have, is it has the value, the, the uh, tattoo in it. There, That's the big thing about that comic is there's these tattoos, like a sheet, and a lot of it, copies out there don't have it. And it really brings the value down. So even though mine might be considered like a four or four and a half. It doesn't matter because it has the tattoos and the tattoos in it. So, you know, happy to have that. This is a really nice condition copy. I would say it's like an eight, five, maybe higher. It's a newsstand. And this is the second appearance of a Hobgoblin. 
So I think, I think this is a good haul. You know, I got some good stuff here. Um, yeah, so Amazing Spider-Man. This one, look at that. First Man thing. Uh, inappropriate cover. First Damage Control. Spawn Blank cover to draw on. First She-Hulk breaking the fourth wall. Cool Captain Marvel cover. War Machine in a disappointing uh, condition comic. <laughs> Batman Adventures number one. Third appearance of Harley Quinn. First Groot in the Marvel Universe. Second appearance Kamala Khan. He-Man and Batman. So yeah, I think, uh, I think I did pretty good on this haul. I'm happy with it. I think this was a... A good haul. So, yeah, you're going to see, uh, you know, a previous episode here, previous episode there, there, and a subscribe button. You know, again, why not become part of the You Love Comic Books conversation? Uh, give the video a like, leave a comment if you have any questions what you saw or have any comments about anything you saw. And, uh, yeah, check out the links in, uh, you know, the caption of this video. All right, thank you, and have a good one. Bye.